In Climate Watch, a new study suggests snow is in danger of disappearing from western states if greenhouse gas emissions remain unchecked. Scientists say that the region has already lost 20 percent of its snowpack since the 1950s. They predict it could lose an additional 25 percent by 2050. For more, let's bring in Benjamin Hatchett. He's an assistant research professor of atmospheric science with the Deseret Research Institute. Good to have you here, Benjamin. So start off by just explaining why mountain snowpack is so important to Western states and the larger environmental and economic problems that are so associated with vanishing snow. So snow provides critical water resources for both our ecosystems as well as our downstream water users for things like agriculture or municipal urban uses and other industrial uses. And many of these uses coincide with the warm dry season. So snow provides us with a natural reservoir to help meet those needs when precipitation otherwise is declining throughout the warmer summer season. Well, our viewers are well aware that Western states have really been plagued by relentless wildfire seasons over the past couple of years. What part does disappearing snowpack play into all of that? So that's a complicated problem, but there are some linkages that are emerging. And those include by having a shorter snow season, and less water stored in the snowpack. It provides more opportunities for evaporation and evapotranspiration to help dry out soils and fuels, allowing for the fire season to extend both in time as well as higher elevations are now able to burn um, because there's less snow and things have more opportunities to dry out. And so with drying fuels, we have much more receptive fuels for fires if an ignition takes place. So help us understand um, what's driving this change. How much of it is a change in snowfall? How much of it is greenhouse gas related? Are there other factors that are coming into play? Yeah, well, there's there's many factors, like, like many of the climate problems. Um, there is a, a bit of natural variability as well, um, but the primary impacts of warming are the transition from snowfall to rain. Many of our mountains are located at elevations where we're already really close to that rain-snow transition elevation. So those ones are very at risk to these um, very, very subtle amounts of warming. Um, and we're losing snowpack as well, not just to the, the background temperature warming, but in places like the Colorado River Basin, uh, dust can be transported from the southwestern deserts, and that helps make the snowpack a little darker, and so it absorbs more radiation and can melt out earlier. And in places that have undergone wildfire, we have similar problems where burned uh, vegetation will deposit darker, light-absorbing particles onto the snowpack, reducing its reflectivity and making it melt out uh, more quickly. And so all of that then feeds back to leading to more bare ground, which warms up and can further melt uh, what snow remains. So, Benjamin, we're focusing our conversation really on Western states, and uh, and our viewers are also seeing some images of Canada, which we understand are affected as well. But we do know that these environmental issues are, by their very nature, global. I'm wondering, are there other regions that are facing similar situations that you can tell us about? Absolutely. Uh, this is definitely a global problem. Mountain communities and, and the downstream communities of those mountains worldwide are having this issue. Uh, places like um, Chile in the South America and many regions throughout South America. Um, Europe is having these kinds of issues. Uh, high mountain Asia, many of the countries that rely on, on snow and glacial melt from um, the Himalayas and other large mountain ranges in Asia. So it's, it's not just a Western US problem. It is very much so a global problem that pertains to um, not just the local uh, environments, but also downstream communities and water availability for, for millions, if not billions, in many places. So, Benjamin, one of the things that's always challenging about these types of segments is that we are able to sound the alarm, we're able to tell people about what's happening and, and forecast what's ahead, but is there anything that, that can be done right now to prevent snowpack from disappearing? Yeah, we still have plenty of opportunities to put all our possible efforts towards reducing, if not reversing in some some cases, perhaps, uh, 
climate warming and, and other negative impacts of climate change. So everything that we do today, like trying to use less energy, switching to cleaner energy sources, like renewable energy sources, all of that not only benefits preventing as much snowpack and, and other cryospheric decline, but other negative impacts on the environment and, and public health and um, our economies by doing this. So we, we have plenty of an opportunity to, to still really move forward in a very positive direction with that. That's good to hear. Um, if low to no snow, though, becomes a reality, are there options available to help to mitigate the effects? Yes, we have a pretty impressive portfolio of different kinds of mitigation strategies that we can implement. Um, however, many of those really hinge upon collaborations between water users, water providers, the various stakeholders and, and public agencies, government agencies, um, the general public itself, um, and really just requires this collaborative effort and willingness to be flexible to achieve some of these goals. Um, some of those options are being explored presently. Um, California has really been leading the charge in that with things such as the forecast-informed reservoir operations, where we are is the rewriting the book on how we have historically operated our reservoirs to try to make what water we have last a little longer and, and maybe not release it when we have a, a storm on the horizon. Um, diversifying supply is a very important one, trying to be flexible in where we can get water and, and perhaps bank that water as well. And then there's a lot of other efforts for restoring floodplains, which have many recreation and ecological benefits. Um, but those floodplain restorations, when we do have flood events, if we put that water where it's supposed to be, uh, that allows that water to help replenish our groundwater aquifers, which is one of our key sources of water. And so this uh, managed aquifer recharge is a very um, excellent opportunity that we have ahead of us. All right. Benjamin Hatchett, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity.